Hi, I'm Dr. Sneha and I'm here to present a poster with one of my colleagues, Dr. Prachi, about a unique case of lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma in the muscle and the contribution of a muscle biopsy. Lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma is a slow-growing non-Hodgkin's type of lymphoma which exhibits a spectrum of lymphocytes, plasma cells and lymphoplasmacytic cells and usually involves the bone marrow as well as the secondary lymphoid organs such as the spleen and the lymph nodes. So we bring to you a case of a 62-year-old lady who presented to us with pancytopenia, splenomegaly, weight loss and persistent pain in her lower limbs after a fall. So upon investigation, we found that she had elevated immunoglobulin G in her blood and bone marrow analysis revealed 50 to 60 percent clonal plasma cell infiltrate along with a small lymphoplasmacytic component, although MYD88 was found to be negative. So after this, she was started on first-line chemotherapy with DRC, which is dexamethasone, rituximab, and cyclophosphamide. After six cycles, she showed very good bone marrow response as well as clinical relief from the pain in her lower limbs. But shortly after, she relapsed with a recurrence in the same symptoms. So we started her on the next-line chemotherapy, that is BRD, bortezomib, rituximab, and dexamethasone. So similar to the first cycle, she showed relief in the symptoms uh, while she was on chemotherapy but recurrence after cessation of chemo. So this waxing and waning pattern of symptoms in relation to the chemo prompted us to investigate a little further. So we did a PET scan which showed increased uptake in the lower limbs and a subsequent MRI showed increased uh, signal intake, uh, intensity in the distal thigh muscles that is the vastus medialis with associated muscle edema. These findings were in keeping with the radiological diagnosis of active myositis. So in trying to investigate further, we found that the creatinine kinase was only moderately elevated. However, the autoantibody profile as well as electromyography studies were both found to be negative. So the muscle biopsy was undertaken as the next best step and it showed inclusion body myositis. But interestingly, it also showed less than 1% clonal plasma cell infiltration, which was lambda light chain restricted. So this is interesting because this, was, this is highly indicative of LPL infiltration within the muscle. So the reason we present this case is twofold. One is because it's a very unique presentation of lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma within the muscle and it has only been reported one other time in the past in an extraocular muscle of the eye. The second reason being that there's no known correlation between myositis and LPL. So these two reasons put together it makes it a very interesting case to discuss in such a large forum such as this. The learning that we aim to take from this case is that any unusual presentation of illnesses has to be further investigated, including an, end or, including an organ specific biopsy if indicated, to rule out any sort of extra nodal or extra medullary disease. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much.